Hi everyone, uh, welcome to another one of our academic success webinar series. Today we will be talking about uh, tips for test anxiety. My name is Ashley Gray. I'm the Disability and Learning Skills Advisor at the School of Continuing Studies. I am here with my colleague, Annie Blatt. She is the Learning Skills Specialist for the Academic Resource Center on Maine campus. So thanks again for joining us. Uh, just a couple of housekeeping items before we dive in. Um, if you're not following us on Facebook or Instagram, feel free to go ahead and do so. Um, we are at ARC Georgetown on Facebook and at ARC under slash Georgetown on Instagram. Um, we update those pretty regularly with resources, tips, and of course, upcoming webinars. Um, you can find out more information about our office and the work we do along with downloadable academic resources, drop-in foreign language tutoring hours if you are an undergrad on main campus and other campus resources in our ARC newsletter on our website. So make sure you're checking in with those regularly. Wonderful. So this is our second to last um, <laughs> a webinar for the fall semester. And as you can see, these are the different topics that we address this semester. Like Ashley mentioned, all of the information is archived on our website. If you go to the academic support link, you will find the academic success webinar series link, and you can click on each of the archived videos. It'll take you to our YouTube channel so you can tune into those different academic topics. So today we are going to talk through test anxiety tips. Our next webinar will be on Wednesday, November 28th. We'll, we will discuss sleep habits. We actually have one of our CAPS clinician at Georgetown co-hosting that webinar. So that'll be some really good information. So please stay tuned for that. And then our final webinar for the fall semester will be final exams. Our favorite topic, getting you geared up to how to break down the material for your final exam, especially if it's cumulative exams, how to really engage with the material to ensure that you are doing your best for those final exams and wrapping up the semester successfully. All right, so we're going to jump into what exactly test anxiety is. So Ashley and I talk with a lot of students about test anxiety, how they feel when they have test anxiety. Um, so just to put it out there, a certain level of anxiety is definitely healthy and it improves performance. So there's always a little bit of anxiety that students may feel, um, but it actually is can be beneficial. It can be a good motivating factor to um, meet a deadline. Um, it could be a really good thing to just keep yourself elevated, to keep yourself engaged. But when it becomes an issue is when it interferes with your ability to perform at the level that matches your preparation for an exam. So if you've been in a situation where you've studied for two weeks, you know, consistently, you've broken down material, and as you enter the exam, you feel like you are blanking out or you are having... Um, you know, some psychological or physiological symptoms happening and it's interfering with your ability to perform. That could potentially be um, what we classify as test anxiety. Or is the anxiety um, impacting the manner in which you can recall previously learned material? So again, you put in the time, you put in the effort to study, and you are unable to recall the material that you have previously been preparing. Again, that could classify as test anxiety. So if you're feeling anything within those categories, it would definitely be a good idea to seek resources. Ashley and I are really good resources on campus to talk through test-taking strategies. CAPS is a really good resource on campus to identify more of the major route or the root of the anxiety um, and looking for strategies to combat it. So we're definitely gonna dive a bit deeper in this webinar. And here we go. Okay. Great. Um, so what does it look and feel like when we're talking about test anxiety? And I think before we kind of dive into that, it's really important to note that this can look and feel differently for different people. And that's why it's really important um, that if you do think you maybe have test anxiety, seek out the appropriate resources um, so you can identify it and put strategies into place. But some common kind of symptoms of test anxiety are elevated heart rate. So Maybe every time you go to sit down to take an exam, you can feel your heart beating faster or an increase in your pulse, difficulty breathing, um, an uneasy stomach, um, excessive sweating, tense muscles. And then we get this one a lot. We see with students the feeling of blanking out, that 
you go and you sit down and you're in the room and you just can't recall anything. Um, and then an ongoing sense of dread and panic. As Annie mentioned before, a little bit of anxiety is good in terms of motivation um, and preparation. But when you, if you're feeling like you're always breaking out or you just are, you know, terrified to take exams, we might be te uh, teetering on the line of test anxiety. And so one of the first important parts of identifying it is identifying the symptoms, because then you're able to put the appropriate strategies into place to help kind of ease the symptoms and make you feel a little bit more comfortable and confident when you're testing. So what to do before the exam? Um, and the first place to start is ensure that you have prepared adequately for the exam. Preparation is really, really key in combating test anxiety. Um, so some of the things that we encourage students to do is first break the course material up over a period of days. Um, and we actually have some really wonderful resources on our website um, and handouts about how to break uh, big exams up. Um, I think you can actually find them under our final exam section. Um, and we actually have two webinars where we uh, final exams from last spring and fall semester where we dive into this topic a little bit more. But this is really, really important, especially as we're going into kind of another round of midterms and finals coming up. How are you breaking up that course material? Are you spreading it out into more manageable chunks? Um, so the more you're able to break it up and the more it seems manageable in short chunks, the less overwhelmed you're gonna feel by it. Um, another big thing that we talk about a lot is self-testing strategies. It's probably one of our favorite things to talk about. Um, and this is really important when you're preparing for exams. How are you self-testing? You're just not studying, but how are you engaging with the material, right? Um, and that kind of leads us into our second bullet point, talking about arriving to the exam location early and pick, up, pick out a seat of your choosing. Um, one of the best tips I think you can do is kind of recreating that testing environment when you're studying. And especially if you're someone who might be prone to experiencing some test anxiety, recreating that environment is really key and making you more comfortable with the testing environment, making you more comfortable with implementing strategies when you're starting to feel anxious or you're starting to feel like you break out, um, or blanking out. So how do you recreate that testing environment? Is it going to an empty classroom? Is it you know taking practice exams in the library? Um, we do not recommend you know studying in your bedroom or studying in really crowded areas. You really want to recreate that environment. That's really um, important. And then the last thing: develop positive thoughts to combat, combat the negative ones. Right. So one of the things that's really important is when you catch yourself and you'll get better with this at time, but the more you become aware of the negative thoughts, the easier it is to catch yourself and then immediately replace that with a positive one. All right, some more things to talk about. Answer the what if questions, right? So what if I fail this exam? And when we think about the what if the questions, it's not supposed to be um, to create more anxiety. It's supposed to be so that you can think about them realistically. Um, and what would happen if you cope, right? So if you feel that you're going to fail the exam, well, what happens if you fail the exam? Think through, what, well, what's the percentage of grades in the course? Um, is there a retake? Can you, how do you learn from that and study better? And in all honesty, the worst case scenario is probably not gonna happen, right? Um, if you, let's say, are your middle taking your exam online and your computer breaks down, or the you accidentally exit out of the exam page, what will what would happen? Um, this is actually great because we talked about this on our last webinar about managing online exams. Um, go ahead and take a screenshot of that. Email your professor right away. So thinking through and having some preparation and talking about through these what if scenarios helps reduce that anxiety. Uh, another easy thing to do that you can implement in the classroom while you're taking the exam, if you're starting to feel overwhelmed, is learning relaxation and breathing techniques to use before and throughout the exam. Um, one of the great ones that I think we borrowed from our friends at CAPS is to inhale to a count of five and exhale to a count of seven. And this deactivates your brain from the fight or flight response and allows you to calm down. Um, there are some other great breathing techniques that you can use um, on 
offline, Google them, and there's lots of apps for that. Um, but have a couple of those resources in your pocket for in case this pops up in the middle of your screen. Lastly, and this is really important as we move into finals, and we'll be talking about this next week um, with CAP, but get a good night's sleep before, not just the night before, but two nights before at least. So when you're looking at research about sleep deprivation, um, if you are staying up all night, it actually takes up to two nights for your body and your brain to fully recover from that sleep deprivation. So really break out those studying materials into chunks. Start studying earlier so that way you are not pulling all-nighters and your body is really well rested. And I think that's going to help combat some of the anxiety as well because you're prepared. Ashley, isn't it true too that when we get a good night's sleep, that's actually when the memory and the information is more cemented in our minds, right? Yeah, you, Annie, you're exactly right. So um, we tell students, especially during finals, you should not be cramming and staying up all night because your brain needs to be able to take that short-term memory and turn it into long-term memory. And that's how everything kind of seals into your brain and you're able to recall it during the exam. So Annie makes a great point. Really, really, sleep is probably one of the most important things when we talk about test anxiety or finals or preparing for exams is that needs to be part of your schedule and it needs to be a priority. Yeah, I think the other thing that we talk about too, Ashley, is to not learn brand new information the morning of the exam, right? So it's definitely making sure that you've broken down the material, you've taken the necessary steps to prepare ahead of time, and you're not trying to cram in new information because what's probably going to happen? You're probably not going to remember it, right? You're not going to remember it or you're going to be so focused on the new information that you'll panic and not be able to retrieve the other information. Perfect. Great, thanks for that. So now we're gonna talk about tips to reduce test anxiety during the exam, okay? And these are some really good test-taking strategies just for everybody. I talk a lot about these strategies with students, even if they're not necessarily feeling that test anxiety. So just things to keep in mind. So before you begin to answer any questions on the exam, conduct a preview of the exam. And what I mean by that is before answering any questions, before marking down any notes, just do a flip through. Do a preview about the types of questions that are being asked. Note the actual format of the exam. Is it all multiple choice? Is there a mix of some open-ended questions? Is there one essay question at the end? So get yourself acclimated to the content, to the types of questions that you're gonna be asked. Part of anxiety comes from the unknown. So it's really helpful to take that control back and say, okay, I know what the format of the exam is and I feel prepared or I have that information before even going in to answer any questions. So as you do that preview, as you start noting questions that are going to be asked on the test, starting to think about how much time you'd like to spend on each section. And maybe making a note in the corner of your paper, corner of your exam, for how much time you want to spend. So say you've got 20 multiple choice questions and an essay at the end, and you have a 50 minute period. Budgeting enough time for each of those sections and giving yourself a little time check. Write down the you know, 15, 20 minutes in the corner for the multiple choice questions, and make sure that you are keeping your own time check to make sure that you are allotting enough time to complete it, but you feel that you are meeting the time parameters and you're not feeling rushed or feeling anxious that you are running out of time. The other thing that could be helpful is as you are doing a preview of the exam is to start marking questions that are similar in nature to one another. So what I mean by that is going through maybe making a star next to questions that are addressing the same concept or questions that are using the same formula. And the reason being is if you get stuck on a certain question and you've noted that it's similar to another question, maybe on the first page, you can go back to that first problem to say, okay, what steps did I take to actually work through this problem? What information did I use? And maybe you could use that information for the question that you're stuck on. So just some good, simple test taking strategies to think of. Some more information is to, or some more strategies is to think about, can you write down the pertinent information that you want to remember for the exam? So as soon as you get to the exam, you do a preview, and then can you start writing down formulas or major concepts or vocab words that you are trying really hard to remember, and you want to relieve the pressure of remembering them and just get them down on the paper. You can always refer back to it, but again, it's relieving that sense of having to remember it in your mind, and you're, it's on the paper, so you can refer to it if needed. 
Yeah, and I kind of tell my students to do a brain dump at the beginning. So any of those sticky formulas, um, major concepts, vocab words that you're just, you know, but you're a little unsure on, brain dump those at the beginning so you're not always worried about accessing them later in the exam. Perfect. And we always talk about this as students are breaking down material when studying, but take breaks during the exam if needed. So maybe during those breaks, it might be just, you know, one, two, three minutes. Utilize some of the breathing techniques, the breathing technique that Ashley mentioned on a few slides ago. Or maybe you can take a sip of water. Or if you're allowed to have food, maybe that's a time that you just take a bite of food, take a break, let your mind relax a bit, take a step back. But definitely try to incorporate breaks. You'll be able to withstand the entire exam if you incorporate breaks, but it's really a good time to kind of reset, refocus, and then get back on track. And Annie, this is especially important, I think, for um, written exams. If you're writing long essays or even the short essay questions, use those as natural breaks to kind of let your brain process from that one maybe long essay topic to the other. Absolutely. And Ashley actually mentioned this. So do a brainstorm next to questions that you're uncertain of how to answer. So doing that brain dump maybe in the beginning or if you get to a question, you're like, gosh, I'm really not sure what information I'm supposed to be using to answer this question. Just start seeing what your brain comes up with. And then during that process, you can start making connections. You can start seeing what information is relevant, what information is not necessary to answer those questions. But that's a really another good strategy. One thing I tell students to do is sometimes when we get confused about the questions that are being asked, I ask students, can you rewrite the question in your own words to ensure that you actually have the full understanding of what's being asked of you? So rewriting the question in your own words or highlighting or circling the keywords of the questions to make sure that you are on track to answer the question appropriately. I think a lot of our students get caught up in maybe the way that professors write questions and they start answering one way and they realize that they're not answering it the correct way and they try and go in a different direction. To alleviate all those issues, try and rewrite the question in your own words or start highlighting the most important aspects that you want to keep in mind while answering the questions. Be fully present. Really try this. Don't let your mind wander or think about what your peers are doing, especially if you're in one of those larger lecture halls. It might be, you know, 100, 200 people. It's easy to wander, start looking up at the clock, start looking around at other people. Really try and stay present and stay focused. And of course, save time at the end of the exam to review your answers, but don't change your responses. I think that's really important. We don't want you second guessing unless it's really apparent. So definitely budgeting enough time at the end to review, maybe making some last minute adjustments, but not changing you know, your entire essay within the last five minutes. That's definitely not a good approach. Um, but at that point, you're just refining your answers, maybe adding, you know, the last touches to it, but you are not changing your responses entirely. Yeah, and I think this is such a really important point, especially as we get into finals, because um, I think most of the time students who might be experiencing some test anxiety in the exams do fine on the actual questions, but might miss like little things like adding your GUID number or signing the honor pledge and those are putting your name on the exam. Those are little things, but they're big things in the end. So this gives you the time to really just make sure those little things are taken care of as well. Yep, absolutely. Okay, so now we're talking about tips to reduce test anxiety after the exam. So you've turned in the exam, all your hard work, hard work paid off, what are some things that you can think about? Reward yourself, okay? You put in the time, you put in the effort, reward yourself for completing the test. This could be a number of things, depending on what your hobbies are, what your interests are, but definitely take some time to take a break, to get some reward and relaxation time in. One thing we do want to stress is don't avo or avoid dwelling on potential mistakes that you could have made on the exam. So really try to avoid the overanalyzing of your answers, or maybe you're rethinking the way that you phrase um, an answer, I try to not do that because that can really increase and elevate the anxiety that you may already feel. Again, we're trying to reduce the test anxiety. And then learn from the process, right? We're not gonna be right all the time. We're not gonna perfect the process every single time we take an exam. So learning from it. Everything is a teachable moment. Think about what strategies did you utilize before the exam? What strategies did you utilize during the exam? And maybe those are some things that you can think about moving forward. And then once you do receive the score in your exam, and if it's 
information that you can review with your professor or TA, do that immediately. Reason being is you will have the information fresher in your mind rather than waiting a few weeks or till the end of the semester to go back and review your answers or your score. And this is a really good time to clear up confusion, to clarify misconceptions, to figure out what information were you not super clear on in order to prep for further class assignments or even that final exam that might be cumulative and you're gonna be retested on this information. So definitely once you receive that score, schedule some time with your professor to debrief. And of course, we can't stress this enough, visit our good friends in CAPS. You can see the number on our screen, 202-687-6985 to schedule a consultation, or you can stop by at the center of the back entrance of Darnell Hall. Great resource, great colleagues there to really debrief with you to talk through some other strategies that could be helpful. Wonderful. So now we're gonna move forward to confronting anxious thoughts. And of course, all of um, everybody kind of experience anxiety like we've talked about. And here are some strategies to think about maybe some of the major anxious thoughts that we can feel um, and how to really combat them. So the first one is everyone else is studying way more than me. I think we've all felt this at some point or the other when we get to talking to a friend or another person in the class and they said that they've been studying for a month now and you studied for, you know, three weeks. So you start comparing yourself and that's something that we don't want you to do. So if you are having this anxious thought, to think about, please think about, that everyone studies at their own pace. So focus on whether you feel that you learn the material for the exam and don't worry about your friend's learning style or their learning pace. Like we just mentioned, take everything into consideration. Change it for the future. So think about what went well, what didn't go right, and what are some things that you want to implement next time in order to ensure that you are putting enough prep in, you are putting enough strategies into place to be successful. So the next anxious thought is, I am worried because I did not study enough for this exam, okay? So you might not have studied enough. Table the issue, walk into the exam with the purpose of using everything you know to your advantage, okay? Think about all the test taking strategies that we've talked about and think about how can you plan to study more effectively next time. But thinking about how can we change this for the future and not get not engage with the anxious thought like Ashley mentioned, but think about how can we problem solve and how can we change it into a positive um, and move forward from there. The next anxious thought is I have to do well in this exam. My future depends on how well I do. And please remember that no one's future truly rides on one single exam. Okay, so in the syllabus, you can see all these different assignments, participation and projects and presentations that are all going to be combined to create your final grade. So there's not going to be one single test that's going to destroy or deter anyone's future goals. So thinking not everyone's one test is not going to impact your future. But find a way to make peace with the reality that not all exams will go your way. Think of several ways to achieve your goal rather than expecting to move from point A to point B at a rapid pace in a straight line. So a lot of students don't learn in just one straight line, okay? We take different points to get to our destination. So just having those options in the back of your mind and thinking again for the future, how can you improve upon your skill set? Last anxious thought is, I never do well on exams, even though I study really hard. And again, if you have any of these thoughts, please feel free to sign up for an appointment with Ashley and I, because we can always talk through them with you. But please take a hard look at your exam. Look at the recent exams that you've had point by point. What habitual mistakes are costing you points? Are they silly mistakes like Ashley mentioned? Maybe not writing your GUID or not you know, putting a apostrophe there or not completing a sentence. So look at actually where the mistakes are happening and think about how can you make sure that you are spending enough time at the end of the exam to review the information, okay? Make sure that your exams are completed and thorough. Often students feel time pressure during the exams. So students sometimes don't read directions slowly enough or carefully and they're making small errors. So give yourself, if this happens to be an issue for you, give yourself some positive anxiety reducing messages while you're taking the exam. So maybe some messaging such as, I have enough time to read the directions carefully, or this exam is going well, I have time to carefully copy over this information. So changing those negative anxious thoughts into positive empowering messages is a really, really key strategy and something that we encourage you to do. 
Great. Thanks, Annie. Um, um, some other just exam day anxiety management tips, um, and you'll hear us talk about these a lot, exercise. Um, exercise relieves, relieves stress, um, whether it's yoga or going for a run, going even for a walk, playing a pickup basketball game, whatever it is, try to incorporate that into your exam day um, routine so you feel a little bit more calm. Um, social support. Identify another classmate or a peer or a friend or a family member who understands maybe some of the anxiety that you're experiencing. Um, this is not supposed to be so that you guys can sit there and like really hone in on this and talk about it for a couple of hours, but just being able to identify those feelings out loud and share them and know that someone else is probably in that same boat is really, really important. Positive self-talk. Um, our brain tends to believe what we tell it. So the more you can talk positively, really have faith in your strategies, in your study strategies, um, in yourself, in the learning that you've done for the entire semester, and the more you kind of talk yourself up, like this is gonna be a good exam, I'm gonna do well, I know the material, I actually think you'll see that have a really positive impact on the day of the exam. Visualize success. So part of what we talked about in terms of um, recreating the testing environment, this fits in really well with visualizing su success. So when you're studying in a similar testing environment, imagine yourself in there doing well. Um, imagine yourself getting that A on the exam. Imagine yourself feeling comfortable and confident in answering the questions. It's really, really important. Um, and then incorporate mindfulness into your daily routine. Um, and mindfulness is something that's a really great tool um, that I encourage students or everyone to use as just kind of a daily easy practice. Um, and so what is mindfulness? Mindfulness is the practice of being aware of one's thoughts, experiences, or emotions. So you can see why this is really important for someone maybe experiencing testing anxiety um, because you're able to be present the more mindful you are. And so some benefits of mindfulness practice is a relief from stress, increased focus because you're working on being present, and improved memory, right? Because the more you're able to focus on one thing, the more that's gonna stick in your memory and the less distracted you're gonna get and not have, take the chance of thing, something not being uh, converted into long-term memory. Um, so if you are maybe interested in mindfulness, maybe it's something that you already do, think about some ways that maybe you can incorporate mindfulness practice into your everyday life. Um, take deep breaths, use the five, seven breathing method we talked about earlier. Um, use whatever works for you. Um, I know a lot of times on like the Fitbits and the iPhone watches, they actually have a breathing kind of uh, feature where that you can press it and it will um, have you breathe in correlation with the vibrations or the beats to help yourself calm down. That's a great, just kind of easy thing um, and it allows you to be present. Maintain a gratitude journal. Um, this is something that like they talk about a lot with bullet point, bullet journals, but write down one or two things that you're grateful for every day. Um, write about one or two things that you think you did well, well every day. Um, pay attention to nature. Um, I think when we were all little, we might've gone on like a nature walk, but take a break, go for a walk. Instead of having your headphones in and listening to music or a podcast, pay attention to like how the wind is blowing through the trees. What are the clouds doing? What are the suns doing? What, it sounds silly, um, but it helps you kind of get yourself out of your mind and focus your attention onto something else. One of the biggest practices of mindfulness is doing one thing at a time. And that can be really challenging for some of our students. You guys have full course loads, lots of extracurricular activities, work, family responsibilities. We know how hard it is to be a student these days. But, you know, they talk a lot about the more distracted we are by trying to multitask, the harder it is to get things done. So take that time, block out that schedule, do one thing at a time and be really present when you're doing it. I think this will be especially helpful in those test taking environments. And last but not least, visualize. As Annie shared, visualize success. What does that look like for you? Visualize yourself walking into the classroom to take the exam. Visualize yourself actually taking the exam, getting the grade back that you want. Um, again, we our brains are very, very powerful, and if we can use them in very positive light, um, we can actually kind of will ourselves um, to be more comfortable and a little bit less anxious in these environments.
last but not least, we just wanted to again share the campus resources. Um, CAPS is a wonderful, wonderful resource. Um, if you feel that you might need them, please call them. They are there for you. Um, their business Monday through Friday, 9 to 5, phone number is 202-687-6985. Um, if it is an emergency after business hours, um, you can call the after hours line and ask to speak to the on-call clinician. And that's 202-444-PAGE, um, which is 7243. And again, that's 202-444-7243 and ask to speak to the on-call clinician. Um, again, Student Health is a great resource if you think it's maybe something a little bit more. Um, and their number is 202-687-2200. As Annie and I shared <laughs> numerous times, if you're looking just to talk with someone about resources or test taking strategies, um, she and I are both available. I am available to students at the School of Continuing Studies and I can be reached at arc-ses at georgetown.edu. If you are a main campus student, um, please feel free to get in contact with Annie and she can be reached at arc at georgetown.edu. Um, thank you again for joining us. Um, we will see everyone in two weeks. Um, with our colleagues from CAPS to talk about sleep habits. Um, in the meantime, if you have any questions, please check us out on our website, download resources, or be in contact with either of us. Um, as always, we have a feedback survey, https colon backslash backslash tinyurl.com backslash ARC webinar feedback. Feel free to get us feedback. Feel free to uh, make suggestions for upcoming webinars or um, ask any questions that you might have not got answered. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great day.